All right, Joaquin, we're about to make this putt, and then suddenly a big surprise comes to your head. Hey, yes, thanks for watching. I'm here with Dr. Izzy Justice. Hey, Dr. Justice. Uh, and, and Izzy, right? I'll just call you Izzy. Just call me Izzy. All right, cool. Uh, where are you based out of? Uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, just outside of Charlotte. A friend of mine had told me about you uh, for a while, and then recently it came up again when I saw in Golf Digest, I think, uh, they were putting up some things about whether or not we should be doing practice strokes, whether people yeah. actually make more putts when they do, like, what's the point of a practice stroke? We think it's to make more putts, but we're going to talk about that later, what the science says about whether making practice strokes, you might actually make more putts, not practice stroking at all. And uh, lots of other really interesting things that Izzy has found in his research. So uh, I think first, because you're like a, a mental game of golf expert, so the mental game starts in the brain. So let's talk a little bit about like the brain as like the controller of what happens in the body. So talk a little bit about the brain. Yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, thanks for, thanks for having me. And just to set some overall context, I don't feel comfortable calling myself as a, as part of the golf ecosystem, like 60, 70% of my work is, is in the corporate space. And then the rest of it is in the athletic space. And then only maybe a third of that athletic space is golf. So I don't view golf as golf per se. I view golf as a target sport, right? So the two or three things that I want to share with you in, in all target sports, whether there's a soccer player kicking a ball, that you want that ball to go somewhere to either a teammate or to a goal or a lacrosse player, you know, throwing a ball to a teammate or towards a goal or a football player, uh, quarterback has a ball, they want to show it, throw it to a receiver. So you know, most of what I know, and I have to be honest, um, it, it was by accident. Around 2014, 2015, Brandon, technology was invented. And in my view, Brandon, and I know a lot of your, your viewers probably don't know this, so it's worth setting neuroscience up as why, you know, um, the information that I have accidentally discovered it, it was an accident. It is because around 2014, 2015, technology was invented that allowed us to look into the brain, and here's the key, Brendan, wirelessly. So we've known, for example, that the brain has electricity. We've known that the brain controls essentially every organ and every muscle um, for 60, 70, 80 years. That's not new information. But in order to see what's going on in the brain, up until again, you know, uh, 10 years ago, uh, someone had to go to a doctor's office, sit in a chair, have a helmet. I'm sure you guys have seen pictures and have 50 wires around your head. So you're very limited with what you can observe. You're just asking yeah. questions and seeing. But when wireless Bluetooth technology was invented, that changed the game for, uh, for me. Because now I can put it on someone while they're shooting a free throw. And the only limitation is I have to stand somewhere between 6 and 12 feet away. So one of the things that, we, that we've discovered, so let me go through three things that the brain controls, because I think that will set the stage up for then all the yeah. other conversations that you have. So the brain controls three things when it comes to target sports, right? So the first one is muscle sequencing. So believe it or not, you and I are coordinating things all the time. So like when walking, we're putting one leg in front of the other, and then we walk. That's a sequence to move us. It's not a target sport. You know, we're not trying to be accurate with something. But, you know, people always argue with me, well, does the brain really control that or does the muscles control that? Well, the muscles execute that. But, you know, all kinds of signals are going on from the bottom of the feet to the entire body to the brain to make sure that you're balanced, you're not running into something. There's a lot of coordination that the brain is doing just to make you walk. So think of a quadriplegic, for example, Brendan. Their brain works fine, their muscles work fine, but the communication in the spinal cord or spinal injury is cut off. So they cannot do any muscle sequencing. So in golf, whether it's a full swing, an iron shot, a putt, a chip, that is a sequence. You're moving your body back and then moving the, bo the, you know, the body forward with a club in your hand. So that sequencing is controlled by the brain. It's not controlled by the muscles. The muscles execute that. The second thing, uh, and then there's, there's one more, is force. Depending on how quick you, you orchestrate that sequencing or how fast or how far you know, that sequencing goes, that's essentially to generate force to hit the ball. So a driver, for example, Brendan, 
you're there's a lot more sequencing. You're using your entire body, but that's because you want to hit the ball as hard as you can or 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 as far as you can. So the force, yes, it's it's generated and executed by by the muscles, but that sense of scale, how hard or soft do I need to hit a ball, putting, uh, uh, for example, that's also controlled by the brain. The eyes give you a sense of scale, three feet, eight feet, 20 feet. That scale then goes to the brain and it processes, okay, is it into the grain? What's the slope here? And those kinds of things. So the brain controls muscle sequencing, the brain controls force. The last thing that the brain controls in target sports, where you, you're trying to coordinate that sequencing and that application of force is target. Now, what makes golf the hardest target sport of all, in my opinion, right? So there are all kinds of target sports, basketball, pitching, throwing, lacrosse, soccer, name it. There are all kinds of target sports in the world. But what makes golf the hardest target sport of all, especially in putting, because in putting, you know, accuracy is a premium. You can miss your drive by five yards and you'll still be somewhere in the fairway or just off the rock. But if you miss a putt by five millimeters, you've missed the putt. So holding the target in your head, again, the target is, is, is the eyes of the camera. It takes the picture or the video, but it's ultimately being processed by the brain. So it's very difficult. And to me, this is the centerpiece skill that I don't think people teach or practice enough, which is to have a target playing in your head while you're not looking at it. That's what makes putting and, and, and golf so hard. So those three things, Brandon, uh, and I'll do a quick pause here. Those three things, the muscle sequencing, how far back and forth you want to go, yeah. the force that you apply to the ball with any club, and then the ability to have a target playing in your head while not looking at it, are all controlled by the brain and in the brain, not in your liver, your heart, or your kidney, or your lungs, or your bones, or your, your muscles. It's all in the brain. So therefore, the brain then becomes the club, the instrument that you want to master so that you can do all those three things to the best of your ability. That makes sense? Yeah, it does. It does. So tell us about your research with putting and then how you came to this, uh, to some of your conclusions about um, uh, pre-shot routine and what would be the best to make the most putts. Yeah, yeah. And again, this was an accident. I, 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 I really have to keep underscoring that is as a non-golfer, uh, I do play golf. Uh, I do have a golf handicap, but again, I'm not a golf instructor. Um, I, I wasn't looking to find something um, as a researcher. You, you, I feel like I had the brain track man to something that I use, um, and it's like having a telescope that you just got that can look into the night sky, but you don't know what you'll find. So as I put the brain track man on golfers and I was watching them with their putting routine, I could see based on the specific brain waves that are going on in the brain. So we have, for example, alpha and theta, which are the good guys. That's a very low frequency. We have beta, high beta, and we have gamma. These are the bad guys. These are your distracting thoughts. These are your negative thoughts. So I started to follow people as they were going through their routine. And I found for the most part that, so I, I call them holes, Brendan, that in their routine, I started to find holes. So what is a hole? A hole is a point in the routine where their mind has wandered, right? Meaning that they're now thinking about something else other than the target, which is what you're really trying to do. And I didn't realize the first time that it happened or the second time that it happened that a, 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 basically a lot of people are doing that. So I know it's very counterintuitive. And I, I don't, my objective is not to be a contrarian. My objective is to, is to tell you what the data says. Oh, yeah. Most routines are actually flawed because the brain knows very quickly what the target is. It knows what the ball is going to do. And therefore, people keep doing their routine. And so their brain knows, oh, well, I'm just doing this for the sake of doing it. And so then the mind wanders. When the mind wanders, it typically does not go to a good place in competition. You're not thinking about something that you have to do or a previous bad putt that you missed or your last hole score or something else. So while people were doing their normal practice strokes, and again, I used to do them too. I didn't think there was anything wrong with it. I'd, it didn't feel like if I'm doing one or two practice strokes that I was doing something wrong. But I found that when people are doing their 
their one or two practice strokes just before, just before they hit the ball, their mind was wandering. Because, and then I would ask, you know, all these golfers that, that I, I, ha I had the, um, at the scan on is, okay, so what were you thinking there? And, you know, over time, over time, over time, as I got more and more of this data, I really realized that that, that three, four seconds that you're doing those one or two practice strokes, your brain has lost the target. In other words, all that time and effort that you spent taking the target, you know, going behind the ball, going behind the hole, the low side, try to see what the ball does. You do all that hard work so that you know what you want to do. And then you go over the ball. Now you're looking down and you're doing these practice strokes. And essentially you've taken your brain to a place that you've lost that. And now you have to get that back. And so I found that to be an unnecessary and then I also realized very quickly, again, just interviewing thousands of, of these golfers of all skill level, like when you're doing your, your practice stroke, like, what are you doing? Like, and they would give you these cliche answers. Oh, I'm just trying to get a feel or I'm just trying to do something. And none of it really was related to holding the target that they just spent all this time taking. And then I said, okay, so trial and error, because that's what good scientists do. Okay, well, let's eliminate them and substitute that time. So that three, four seconds that you spent doing those air putting strokes, if you substituted that, so not eliminate entirely, and instead of doing those practice strokes, you said, okay, let me see if I can hold, let me see if I can replay without looking at the hole, what I just did in the last, whatever, 30, 40 seconds. And suddenly, boom, if there was a target in your head, I found people were, number one, making better strokes. Their sequencing was right, which is what that means. They were applying the right force and putts were going in, especially putts inside 10 feet. So that's how, again, completely by accident, not even knowing what I was looking for, that, that, that I made that. And then I started to test that with more and more golfers. And almost every golfer that came to me had some version of a practice stroke. And I was very surprised. I, I, I was completely surprised that, oh my gosh, you know, the overwhelming... When you do research as a, as a statistician, it is highly unusual to find a pattern and especially a pattern that is, you know, consistent as in over 90%. Like when you see numbers like that, you, you, you almost question yourself because that's not normal. And so, but I found again, consistently like overwhelming majority of the cases that eliminating practice strokes, but replacing that time with trying to replay the target as your eyes are not on them was a much better use of time as opposed to those practice strokes. Let me ask you, uh, so in general, uh, how much better of a putter, like strokes gained wise or however you measured it, are, are people without practice strokes as long as they replace that time with uh, holding the target? Yeah, so I, I you know, uh, again, um, I don't have those numbers as in you go on the course, uh, but I will tell you uh, the anecdotal data that I get once they've taken that lesson with me and once we've seen that, and I have, I don't know, maybe two or 300 text messages from people when they go back and say, from all over the world, by the way, from people that, you know, Colin Morris and I did a podcast on, on this, I don't know, six, seven months ago. We went into detail about this and he gets a ton of messages. I get a ton of messages as in, and it's not just making putts, Brendan. I'll, I'll tell you the other part of, of, of this approach is people say they're less stressed. It's like, it's almost liberating when your focus is the target. Like there's less stress when, when you putt this way, as opposed to trying to think of, oh, what is the technical thing that I, that I need to fix? And, and simply saying, if I missed it, if I missed a makeable putt, did I really hit it to a target? Was Did I really have the target in my head? Or did I have some type of a technical thought or a, or, or a negative thought? Yeah, I know that with some of the external, internal, external focus stuff, that there, there seems to be like a shelf in like ability where like internal focus will help like poor golfers, but... Uh, the better you are, the more external you should be. Is that the same with this, or is it pretty much across the board for level of golfer? Um, I don't understand what you mean by external. Can you help me understand what what do you mean by oh, that? So, so if my focus is out there, out beyond my body, and I'm looking there, 
rather than like uh, focusing on my stroke. Yeah, that would be like an internal cue. And uh, I think uh, Gabriel Wolf and and some people had seen that, like for novices or not very good golfers, that internal feels can actually help. But then once you get to a certain ability, then then it's really all external. So is it this? Is it similar mm-hmm. with this with so, ability or? No. Oh, okay. I, I I get it, and that's a very good question. That's a really good question. So I think it's both. You know. So. It's okay to have an internal feeling like, like this is what I want to do. And, you know, I always say that if you can connect whatever feel you have. And to me, the best feel is I want to hit the ball in the center of the putter face. Right. So because that's what that's the most pure spot. So I, I encourage people not to choose, not to make a, a false choice between a technical thought and a target thought, but to combine them in a sequence. So to say, I'm going to hit this dimple on the ball to send it there. Mm-hmm. So the target That's that is always, the context of it. Exactly. The target is always the king. I, I have a book coming out later this year, almost done, but you know, I'm, I'm calling it tar- golf is a target sport. It's so easy, Brendan, to make golf a technical sport. And at the end of the day, yes, there's a technical element to it, but the objective of the game of golf is to send the ball to your target. That's the name of the game. And again, in that context, if you agree with that definition of what golf is or what kind of a sport golf is, and I just told you the most difficult part of that is that your eyes are not on the target. I mean, there's no other sport where like a basketball player is shooting a free throw or or, or, a, or a three-point shot and their head is looking someplace else. So that analogy alone should tell us why golf is such a difficult sport in terms of a target and especially in putting because in putting that hole is so small but you know so so if you can combine that that whatever feel that you need to the external part the point that i agree with you on is that most better players they 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 tend to have good mechanics and so their issue is they have too many competing thoughts or distracting thoughts and just remember if I can digress, uh, actually, I'm not uh, digressing, Brendan, but we are living in a human condition today in the year 2023 that no other generation of human beings have ever experienced. So let me just give me 60 seconds, if you don't mind, because this is kind of key. So the average EEG, which is what we measure, uh, so EEG is the noise in your head. That's the combination of all of those brain waves that I just talked about. The average EEG of a normal person today is the equivalent of a schizophrenic patient from the 1940s and 50s. And that is solely because of devices which are allowing our brain or forcing our brain to constantly consume stimuli. If you think of a a buffet, like, you know, you go to a restaurant and they have a buffet and you can eat all you want. Like at some point, you know, you, you can't eat anymore. But in the same way, we are feeding our brain this constant stimuli. So the, the problem with that is that we cannot get rid of our devices because then we can function. We need to text our children, our spouses, our coach, and we need to communicate. So those devices aren't going anywhere. But when there's this much noise in your head, it makes two things happen in golf, right? So when everyone's baseline EEG are so high, that means your ability to hold the target is compromised, not because there's something wrong with you, but because, you know, before you're a golfer, you're a human being and you have to live in the world that we live in today. So there are things about, about our way of life today that are making putting much, much more difficult because every three to 10 seconds, and this is according to Johan Bari, um, you know, um, uh, every three to 10 seconds, we're being distracted and get this, Brendan, not externally, like someone yelling or screaming, but by our own brain. Our own brain is processing that massive amount of noise in our head. So that's what I think is making all target sports, but especially target sports where your eyes are not on the target, which means your brain has to hold it. And if there's noise in your head, it makes holding that target so, so, so difficult. What have you found about... um... 
because people, when I've been talking to people about this, we just had a golf school and I was, when we were doing our putting thing, I was, all of us were experimenting with this. What have you found out about, um, looking at the hole while you hit the butt, like Jordan Speed does? Yeah. Else. Yeah. So I've been asked that many, many, many times. And again, you know, I, I've actually done that. I, I put the, the EG machine on, on people and had them look, look at the putt. And I find that. You know, um, I mean, this is just a harsh reality in putting and in golf in general. There are two targets. You have to hit that ball in the middle of the putter face. And, you know, I think that it is the wrong answer uh, uh, to the problem. I think at this point, you, you are trying to hold the target in your head by looking at it. But you still have to hit the ball in the middle of the, of the putter face. So I think unless you are very, very skilled at hitting the, the, the putter in the middle of the face, I don't think that that's a good idea. I think it's a better idea. And I can give you a quick tip for all of your viewers and fans. So can I try something with you? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So um, can I ask you where you live? In Long Beach, California. And, and where were you born and raised? Philadelphia. Okay, great. So in, in about five or six seconds, I'm going to ask you to do something, but let me explain it to you. In about five or six seconds, I'll say, hey, Brendan, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to describe your childhood bedroom to me. Okay. Okay? Go ahead. Close your eyes and as and may detail as you can, describe your childhood bedroom to me. Okay. It was a converted attic that had a spiral staircase that went up to it and there was a painted red arrow that went all, all around the whole room and I lived there with my brother and in the summer it got super, super hot like unlivable almost. And then, uh, it it's had two, two built it things in the room would be, it had two desks. I had a, uh, like a jar of colored pencils. It had probably, it was messy. It had a lot of toys on the floor, green army men, uh, GI Joe stuff. <laughs> okay. That's good. Yeah. That's good. I uh, can open your eyes. We go. So I will tell you, Brendan, if you can give me 60 seconds to just process that. What you just did there is the most important skill in putting. You just described something that you're not looking at. Okay. And you described it in vivid detail, right? You were not, I mean, this is not even something that you're not looking at, but this is something from your distant past. Yeah. And so that skill, which you just demonstrated that you have, is the ultimate putting skill. If you're looking down at the ball with your putter in hand and the ball right there, and you have a five, four, six, seven, eight foot putt, and you can describe that target the same way that you describe your room, okay. your goal. Okay. And that's something that people don't teach. And again, I, I am very, very careful, and I, 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 I wanna make this crystal clear. I give honor, I truly give honor and massive respect to all the people in the game of golf, the instructors, the coaches. I, I, I do not want to get into any negative thing about they're doing something right or wrong. All I'm saying is that the technology that we now have is, is allowing us to look into the brain that in a way that we never could. And now we are realizing, oh, in missed putts, they have lost the target. In almost every case, you know, sometimes they, they, they misread it. You know, they thought the ball was going to do one thing and did the other. But in the overwhelming majority of cases, they simply they were never trained to hold the target or to describe the target in their brain the way that you just described your room. Okay. Yeah, I just um, I just wrote a book, actually. I don't have it here with a friend of mine called Elite Putting. You guys can get it on uh, Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. But in the it's funny you say some of what you said because in the book I said uh, I've seen – um, research recently say, saying that um, it's actually not as important as they thought uh, of hitting the exact exact center of the the putter face but uh, from what I've found is that is the most powerful uh, in swing thought though is like of all because you could think of lots of things like I could think like take it to my toe to like toe to toe or I could think like slight arc or I could think like you know, an opening release door or something. Club. Yeah, release yeah. the club or anything like that. But of all those things, the thing that um, 
me and the people that come to the golf schools always almost universally do best with, especially like under more pressure is if like you reduce it all down to like, all right, let me just hit this in, in the center of the face. I so, completely agree with you. My, okay. data, my data can confirm that is that, and, 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 and now I'll even go a little bit further. Uh, when I go on tour on, on any of these tours, um, and watch my guys, you know, I, I, and I'm actually not even exaggerating on Monday and Tuesday. So practice round days, my brain, I literally get a headache when I go to the putting green and I see about a hundred different devices and training aids and, and those sure. kind of things. And you are completely right. I think the one skill, uh, technical skill that you want to have is to hit it in the middle of, of the, of the putter face. 